Hello, welcome to the Pink and Podcast. My name is Connor Southwell and I've been uh, catching up with Jens Berlaski, former Norwich City defender who is now managing in the Faroe Islands. Um, I think he was in Denmark actually when we had this chat, so fairly uh, continental uh, conversation uh, that I really enjoyed actually. Jens was a, a, a really good talker, um, had a lot of great stories to share a lot of great moments to share uh, honesty is is something that shone through during this chat as i'm sure you'll see and um for me pertinent given how much he loves the club even though he only played 30 games for norwich city and um remembers it fondly in a in a team and a time that did so well um so here you go here is the full chat with jens berlaski i hope you enjoy it uh, we've got plenty more of these on the way for different norwich city players from uh, different eras of course these times are very difficult. I hope you're all staying safe. We'll do our best to try and bring you as many of these as we can from a range of eras. Hopefully we, we want to do recent ones, not so recent ones as well, and really cover a, um, a tapestry of Norwich City history. So enjoy this chat with Jens Berlaski. And uh, of course, if you like it, then remember to leave a, uh, a like and a, and a review and all that jazz. Thanks for listening. So I thought basically we'd, we'd just start with what you're up to now because you've obviously gone into management, haven't yeah. you? So uh, yeah, how, yeah, how are you yeah. finding that? Oh, I'm I'm loving it. It's uh, <laughs> you know when when you when you stop playing football, you, you know you, you, I figured out that I needed something to to do every day that I uh, that I was just as passionate about as as football itself, as playing. And uh, after 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 we came back to Denmark, uh, after I left Norwich. Then uh, I started coaching my son, who was at that time he was five, five or six, mm-hmm. I think, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then uh, I, uh, to, uh, I did some of the coaching badges. Meanwhile, I was still playing and coaching him uh, a lot, and it was like three or four times a week, you know, in, on the training pitch. So I had a lot of practice, uh, and then it just, you know, it just really. Uh, Got on to me, uh, and then, uh, and then, of course, uh, at the end of my playing career, I, I became a playing assistant coach uh, for a year, and then, uh, and then, started full time coaching. What is your, if if, uh, if you're going to describe your sort of coaching style, your philosophy, maybe what, what would you define it as? What sort of football do you like your teams to play? Oh, well, it's it, you know, it's it's not something I can say in 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 in, in the. Sh- in a few words, it's uh, you know I I I, I like uh, and I try to be a manager who's who's honest mm-hmm. about what he's doing and I I I prefer a team playing some honest football. Uh, I want us to take the initiative. I will, I've always been very impatient myself, <laughs> uh, and 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 you know passive passive football it doesn't interest me at all. So I'd rather that we take some risk. Uh, and that we attack with and without the ball, uh, with a lot of intensity, a lot of a lot of passion on the pitch, uh, which is it's more fun to to play that way. And it, it I think that's that's the way to develop modern football players, uh, you know, for the for the future, who be people who can think and make decisions on their own, uh, you know, after after what they're taught. Uh, and also who can take the initiative uh, in the game uh, with with the ball, uh, but also when, they, when, when we don't have the ball, uh, and and then some 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 real aggressiveness in in you know with with and without the ball as well. Lovely stuff. You you're managing the Faroe Islands, aren't you? What, what, yeah, sort of, yeah. what sort of football culture is it is it like over there? Because I think people in England <laughs> perhaps won't won't know too much. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that much either. You know, of, of course. You know, when when you come to Northern Scandinavian, it's very, it's very tough, and you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of duels and a lot of, uh, you know, high high intensity stuff, uh, and people they hit each other hard. It's 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 actually it actually reminds me a little bit of of you know, the old school British style. Mm-hmm. When I when I first came, and I, now I'm of, of course trying to to put my own uh, you know influence on on the team, and and everyone is playing on artificial turf up there because we don't have have the climate to play on on real grass, which means that we can play on a smooth and fast surface all year round. Even in the summer, they uh, they 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 turn on the sprinklers before before the game, so we have a, a wet and fast uh, surface all year round, which means that we can play a lot of technical football. 
uh, which whereas in Denmark, where I've also been coaching uh, in the Super League, you know, it's uh, in 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 the early month of the of the season, it's it's uh, the pitches are heavy and 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 not that that good, so it it becomes very direct with a lot of second balls and a lot of chaos. Uh, a lot of a lot of fighting, uh, and uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to 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 teach them how to think football a little bit more, mm-hmm. and it's 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 going well. Uh, they're adapting well, and they are very eager to learn. They're very hardworking people, uh, and they they're good at taking taking feedback and dealing with it. Uh, so uh, so it's uh, it's it's been a, a very good experience so far. Lovely stuff, and uh, I don't think Norwich fans will forgive me if I if I don't ask you the question in terms of perhaps your aspirations in management. Would you would you like to come over to England and, and do a bit of coaching, a bit of management? Yeah, of course. That's you know, uh, it's 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 been it, it's been <laughs> it's been a dream since I was there, uh, and since 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 we left Norwich in when was it two thousand and eleven mm-hmm. to come to come back to England, and of you know Norwich has a, has a special place. For, not just for me, but also for my family. You know, we, maybe we can come back to that sooner. No, no, no. Later, that that you know, it's 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 one of the few places where where we really felt like home. You know, you don't you don't you don't get that often in a football career that you settle somewhere, and within a short period of time, you just feel like home, and you you feel like you can stay there forever. But that was the feeling we had, even though you know the 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 last year I was there, I didn't, I didn't play that much. Uh, but we we still felt like it was our home, and uh, whenever we visited the place uh, since then, it, it it it's the same feeling you, you get because it's just a, an amazing place to be. So so yeah, I have a, I have a little secret dream of, of coming back to Norris eventually one time when I'm when I'm good enough and I've I've learned what I need to learn to to be able to coach at that level uh, uh, I would I would love that uh, but uh, but until then then maybe somewhere else in England uh, that would that uh, I, I just love the passion in football in, in England and you know not just from the players and the clubs but the whole environment and the fans you don't you don't you don't you don't get that many places it's it's something it's something special yeah in, in terms of what you just said there about Norwich feeling like home it's it's amazing the amount of Perhaps ex footballers and players who've played for Norwich that actually do stick around in in North. Yeah, yeah, what, what exactly. is it? What is it about the place that sort of uh, I don't know attracted you to it, which is which has made you fall in love with it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's many things. You know, of of course, you know where I come from in Denmark. It, it, it the whole surroundings and the size of the city. It rem, it reminded me of home. That was the first thing. Uh, and then and then people people there are just really warm. You know, that's what that's what we learned. Uh, you know, it, it, it took us a few weeks, and then we felt at home because people were really welcoming and they were they were looking after each other. And and it is it is it is a place where you 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 hang around, you stick around for a long time. And as you said, a lot of the players I've played with back then, they are still involved in the club in in various roles. And uh, even even though the, the club has been through a lot of changes during the last ten years. You know, people people stick around because they 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 just really love to be there, and and it's 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 hard to explain the vibe of the of the city. It's just it's just warm and familiar, and I I, I was lucky to live just uh, 200 yards from the from the ground from the home group from from, from Carroll Road. So I had I had a I had a two minute walk to the games every time, <laughs> and I had to I had to you know I had to. to Walk 30, 30 minutes, you know, add, a, add an extra thirty minutes to get there because I knew whenever whenever I had to I had to pass, I don't know, a few hundred people who want to say hi and how's it going and yeah, you know, and they were they were they were just really positive and really friendly and it was it was always safe also for the kids, you know, to 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 be at the to be to be at Carroll Road, you know, there was there was never this hostile. You know, sense of, of you know atmosphere that you sometimes experience. I was, I, you know, I, I was at Millwall also for a month <laughs> on, on a loan, and it, you just can't compare these things. It's it's just it's just something special at, at Norwich. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a, a lot of fans will will love to hear you say that. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk about your your Norwich career then. How, how do you reflect on it? It's been what oh, nearly ten years since you left the club yeah. now. How do you sort of reflect on on that period of your career at Norwich? Yeah, when you ask me, it's 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 not that often that someone asks me to reflect about it anymore. <laughs> so so I have to, I have to think back a little bit. But uh, of course, of course, it's 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 a big highlight for me and you know my my career. Uh, and and you know coming from the Danish the Danish Super League uh, and not not being something special there and then then you know I, I got a chance in Turkey for two years and had some some great experiences there uh, and then suddenly I, I ended up in Norwich City and and it you know it it it, it kind of struck me maybe maybe a few years after that I was really really. Uh, lucky and blessed to 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 have played for for a football club of that size, uh, and and you know I still I have I still have that feeling. I'm I'm just extremely proud that I was there, even though it was you know I played most of my games in League One. Mm-hmm. I was still part of something something big and a and a, and a good period for for the club at that time. Even though you know it, it's been some tough it's been a tough year or two. Uh, just before I arrived, and then we were lucky to turn it around, and being being part of that and playing a little role in that was was amazing. Yeah, abs- absolutely, and and you certainly remembered fondly in Norfolk. There are certainly a lot of people that are that are, are big fans of yours. Um, I'm, I'm interested in in terms of how the actual move came about because you were playing in the in the Turkish yeah. second tier, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so so how did a move to Norwich in in League One in England came come yeah. about? Because that's probably not a, a natural step. I think many no, supporters would no. say. Yeah, well, well, I think I think the the connection was already there maybe a year or two earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steen Steen Nedergaard, who was there at Norwich, of course, he was he he was he was scouting and and you know doing some 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 agent work, and he'd already been in contact on my behalf and trying to to get me in. But but uh, you know then it's always a coincidence when things happen. You know, there has to be a spot, and and it all has to, to to fit in. And then suddenly, suddenly there was an option, and then uh, they they asked me if I was eager to go and and show myself for for a few days. And of course, you know, I I, I was I was ready to do that. And and you know, my my luck was at that time that the, the team had just come from a long summer holiday. Maybe five six weeks holiday, so and 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 that's one of my, <laughs> as a player, one of my biggest assets was that I was really hard working, and I was always always fit. Also also in this in the, I always worked harder than the other guys, in the in the breaks because I need I, I needed that extra. Uh, so I was fit when I, when I arrived. And had and I was able to show myself from a good side. Maybe some of the players they weren't really that fit when so so I had a little head start and it, it allowed me to to really show myself from a good side. The uh, you know when I when I came, I think we were at, we were in Scotland for a week or something like that mm-hmm. with with Brian Gunn on a trial. And you know I was I was lucky to play to play a, a few good test games and and score a goal and you know. To, to show myself from from the from the, from the best side, and uh, luckily that was enough. Well, yeah, it certainly was. And, and in terms of the the trial you, you speak of there, what what does that actually consist of? Is it just training and, and being around the team, and almost yeah. you, you showing yourself off to the club, but also the club showing itself yeah. off to you? Yeah, of course. You know, I've, I've you know as as, as, a, as a as a coach now for a, for a few years. You know, it's 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 always. You, you know, when you when you when you get a new player in for a trial, you always look uh, at him. Of course, does he have the football ability that you that you're looking for? And of course, you know a lot of you know a lot in advance, uh, and you just need to see if he's fit, if, if if he's if he's mentally there, if he's if he's hungry. Is, does he have the right attitude? And then, of course, does he does he blend in well with the team? Does he fit in with the team's values and stuff? Or, or is it, or does or is he, you know, does he have does he come from a culture that's just too different for him to be able to fit in? And uh, I think you know I've I've always been been flexible and and you know enjoyed. Uh, Learning new cultures and, and and learning new people to you know getting to know new people and and 
always been very curious. I still am. That's why. I, that's also one of the reasons I'm I'm in Faroe Islands now because you know, when when do I get the chance to experience that mm. Mm. again? So so, and I, I think every time I experience something new, it just adds you know something to me that that you know I can I can use as a, as a leader and as a manager. It adds an aspect and, and a layer to me as a, as a person. Uh, and and yeah, that's what you look for uh, when when you have a when you have a trialist. And then yeah, then it's just a matter of being a little bit lucky sometimes. I've also had trials where where it didn't go well, you know. And it's it's a little detail sometimes. Mm, it's it's about finding the perfect match, I suppose. Isn't it? it is. It is. Of course, of, yeah, of course it is. And then sometimes you 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 see something, and you think after a few days this is perfect, and then you know within uh, within a, a couple of months it just you know you you find out nah, it you know sometimes you need a little more time to to know, but but you have a sense after a few days. You always do if mm-hmm. it's good or if it's not working at all. The personality stuff, you can sense that within a few hours, I would say. Mm, that's, yeah, that's, that's certainly interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've been speaking for, for, what, 15 minutes or so, and you already strike me as someone who, and, and you said it there in terms of experiences, who, who likes to go and experience new cultures and, and new countries. Oh, yeah, and yeah. There are a, a lot of players who perhaps see England as, as almost a, a big dream and, and players who, who dream of playing in England. Were, were you like that, or was it, again, as, as you referenced earlier, just another experience and something else to tick off to improve yeah. you as a person? Yeah, it's the, it, it, it was not like I, I grew up and had a dream of, you know, uh, or, or a goal of I just have to go to England. Mm-hmm. But of course, of course, it was something special. I knew that already. And uh, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was also a question for me because I had two years in Turkey where the, the raising a family, I had, I had two boys and they were, they were one, one was born halfway and the other one was one when we went there. And and we had to we had to split split up. So my wife had to move back home to Denmark because it was so difficult with the with the culture there to fit in. And I was never at home. I was on training camps and in the hotel uh, all the time. So so raising two two small boys on her own was difficult. So she had to go back to Denmark, and we had to you know see each other on and off. So we also needed some stability and something that was not Denmark, but still a little bit similar. Mm-hmm. You know, and more, and more, more, you know, more family friendly. And then, of course, the option came up, and I thought, okay, England, that would be amazing for me as a, as a football player to to experience uh, and 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 to see if you know, and and also for us as a family. And and it it just turned out to be something that we we hoped back then that we could stay there until I stopped playing. Back then, I thought I could play until I was forty. Uh, of course, you learn <laughs> in time that that you can't. Uh, and I hope that I could play there until uh, I dropped dead eventually. But uh, yeah, you know, things things don't always turn out the way you hope. But it was it was two amazing amazing years. And uh, yeah, we still we still have a dream of coming back. So when we came back, we put our we put our kids in an international school for them to to keep 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 up with the English mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, also also you know for the same reason that that if we if we had the chance if we got the chance to come back to England then they were ready yeah well, let's let's hope you, you find yourself back here at, at some point that would that would be excellent for sure for, for you and, yeah. and for everyone involved uh, certainly I, I want to take you back to sort of after your trial period and and, and perhaps when, when you first came into the Norwich City squad. What what was it like that back then? Because as as you referenced before, it was a club that perhaps hadn't had great periods before. Uh, obviously, that season under st- well it started with Brian Gunn, ended with Paul yeah, Lambert. But, yeah, but what yeah. was what was the dynamic in the group like? Was it quite a I don't know, quite a, a, a group that was a bit down in the dumps, or, or was it actually quite quite together? Yeah, I think I think when I came. You know, it was it was all a little bit uncertain because because they just they just relegated a lot of new players came in, mm. uh, and I think as I recall, it was quite new for Gunny. He he hadn't been a, a manager there mm. for that long, mm. no, and he also had to to find himself in that role and how would he how would how would he deal with that you know and the pressure of you know we had to we had to promote and and we didn't even. You know, we didn't really had time to to 
to deal with all that before he was out, and then suddenly Paul Lambert was there. You know, we just had a sh- we just had a terrible start. I remember I remember my 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 license to play. It hadn't arrived before the first game where we had to play um, Colchester mm-hmm. at home. And my wife, she was over for a few few days. Uh, I, w- I was trying to get the apartment ready and everything, so I was still in the hotel. And she was over visiting. And we sat at the stand, at the Gerald stand, mm-hmm. way way up high. And no one no one knew who I was at that time. So I, we, we could sit there and, and, you know, talk freely. And no one really took notice. And then after 20 minutes, we looked at each other. And we went, what did we do? Because we were down 4-0. Mm. <laughs> and people started leaving <laughs> leaving the stadium. And they were furious. And we were like, oh, no. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, everything turned around. And then suddenly, suddenly the, the atmosphere just changed. Like, it, it was it was literally from one day to the other. It just changed. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah it was... It was uh, it was it was a good group. They were we we were enjoying each other. You know, people were you know the atmosphere wasn't bad. It was maybe too friendly and too you know everyone was just uh, it was nice, nice city. It's a nice place to live. Mm. But but we didn't have that winning edge in our in our, in a, you know in everyday training. We didn't have the right attitude. And Paul Lambert he changed that from from first minute he went in you know through the door. And that was maybe his biggest, his biggest asset and, and quality as a manager that he just had this extreme winning mentality aura, mm. uh, and he just pushed people, you know, every, every day. Yeah, funnily enough, I've uh, I've I've got a, a few notes beside me just of your career. I've, I've I've got a bullet point with Paul Lambert that that just says aura. Um, yeah. So, so I think that that goes to show what he's all about. But I, I want to speak about. Uh, Gunny a little bit because obviously club legend in a very difficult position obviously yeah, felt yeah. like he, he owed the club a little bit um, yeah. w- what did what did you make of him what did the players make of him because ultimately and you, you referenced that Colchester game yeah, there's probably yeah. a, a generation of supporters who, who probably remember him for that when actually he was yeah. a, a, a massive Norwich City legend yeah yeah. I think I think actually I felt bad for him because he, did, he didn't deserve the, the exit he had after everything he'd given to the club and he was such a nice guy, and uh, you know that job he had was. I think it was just too difficult for him. You know, as, was it his first job as a manager? Yeah, yeah, hadn't been a manager. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. And taking taking a club that's that's been knocked down, you know, had had one knock after the other, and trying to pick that up with no experience. Uh, and then, and then he had, you know, sometimes, you, you know, the seven, the seven, the seven nil defeat in the in the first round was, you know, how do you rise from there if you have no experience of managing at all, of coaching at all, uh, with a group of players that that are just not, you know, at the right spot, and with ev- you know, everyone around you going, you know, just everyone's eyes is just on you from the first. Uh, from the first minute mm. and doubting are you the, are you the right guy for this mm. and that's just that's just just a terrible position to be in yeah absolutely. so so i i felt bad when he when he had to leave because you know he brought me in he gave me the chance uh and he he was he was he was such a nice guy the whole staff was he was ian uh, what was the name butterworth mm-hmm. very nice guy as well uh, and 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 they they didn't deserve the exit, but that's just football, you know. That's that's how it is. Uh, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it goes bad, and it's always uh, the the manager who gets the sack and gets the uh, gets the blame. Yeah, it certainly is. And and it was, it was the Yeovil game, wasn't it, that you made your debut in in, in the cup? Yeah. Was was that quite a weird experience? Because obviously it should have been an exciting occasion and. It actually, probably had the defeat looming over it. Obviously, all the stuff in the background with with Gunny and, and perhaps a potential exit. Was it a bit yeah. strange for, for you that night? Yeah, I don't. I, when I look back at the night, you know, for me, it was just a matter of you know, you know, taking my chance and say, okay, they didn't do well in the first the first uh, the first round, and that was my chance to get into the team and to 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 prove that I could help. 
uh, and get us in the wrong uh, in the right direction. And uh, thank God, uh, Holt he uh, he started uh, he started his uh, his spell there, and I think he scored three. Did he score all four? I don't remember. Definitely scored three. I think didn't he, he definitely. Yeah, yeah I think he scored uh, you know three, and he was on fire. And then you know it was yeah. So 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 that was my luck that that uh, you know from from a personal perspective, and I think. It was, it was, it was. You know, it, I remember we were away and we stayed away after the Oval game until we played the Exeter game. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was. I think did he get fired after the Oval game? Maybe before the Exeter game. I'm not. I'm not sure. I just remember it was. It was a few awkward, awkward days in the hotel. Mm. Because sudden, suddenly he had, you know, suddenly he he left in the middle of everything, and you know it's it's never it's never nice when 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 a manager gets 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 fired. It's it's always it's always sad in some in some way, uh, especially for for a guy who just you know who brought me in and he was a nice guy and he really tried everything he could, and you know. Also, with the history he had at the club, it was it was, it, it was a shame. It was, you know, I really I really feel bad for him. I felt bad at the moment, and I, I'm I'm happy that he's doing something now that that you know that he's he's loving and that he's he's doing well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it's nice to see him doing well. And and, and you, you mentioned earlier on your reference saying when when you first came in about perhaps a little bit of uncertainty in the dressing room, and and suddenly what a few games into the season you find yourselves without a manager. That's that probably didn't help things. I I, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, no, no, of course, of course, it's it, you know when you get a start like that where everyone expects you, you know, you spend a lot of money on on new players, and and you know you you you're in the league where you're not supposed to be, and you know everyone expects you to win, and then suddenly you start start with the maybe the you know, you've just you just come from a from a from a year of bad experiences. Losing and losing and losing, and then you start losing seven nil. It's 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 terrible. It's it's just you know he's probably had didn't have much he probably didn't have much sleep these 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 weeks, mm. you know, uh, and then suddenly uh, you know you you find yourself in the middle of a tornado and and you, you don't know how to get out of it. You can just sometimes sometimes as a, as a coach or, or as a manager, you know, in 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 the short term period, you can sometimes you can just hope. That, that things will go your way mm. today, and uh, and then we win four 0 and then you know people think okay we, we you know we're on the right track, and then uh, and then suddenly it, it's you know it's from it's it's <laughs> it's back from scratch, and then we had to as as a group and as as players and as team to to suddenly uh, you know find us find ourselves as a group within a new uh, coaching staff again. And of course, that it, it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, I can imagine it does. Let's let's speak about Paul Lambert then and and his his arrival because uh, it, it must have been quite strange for for all the players really to sort of experience that Colchester United game and the seven one defeat and then suddenly yeah. their manager turns up and is in charge yeah. of, of of that squad. What what did he say to you as a, as a group when he when he came in to to sort of inspire you and get you going? Oh, what did he say? Well, it was not like he he had, he had a long, lot of long inspirational speeches. He was more short and sharp, mm. and you could just sense, you know, he, he just had an aura and a presence that you know he didn't he didn't talk bullshit. He just uh, you know he just gave it to you straightforward. Mm. If you if 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 you if if he didn't like your performance, he would tell you straight you know straight up uh, in front of everyone. And if he if he was happy with you, he would uh, praise you like. Uh, like you've just won the World Cup for him, if if he felt that was uh, the case, and and uh, he was he was very uh, direct. He was he he oh he puts the demand really really high, and I think he was he was he was lucky that he had a group of players who were really uh, you know a lot of a lot of players with a lot of. Uh, who, who were really self-managing, you know, in the in the way that they they were clever. A lot of them had been captain, or maybe were going to be captain mm-hmm. uh, in in the teams they left, or, or you know, later on. Uh, a lot of players, basically almost everyone with British 
background. Then there was me, and then there was this Croatian striker, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and he, you know, he did, he, he he left the club quite 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 fast and that was me and my mentality wasn't far from from British so it worked well with him just being really tough and really direct but also you know with the you know with a funny comment now and then mm. uh, and 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 he, he just didn't uh, put up with anything you know if, if people weren't weren't training good enough within the first two minutes of training he would stop the training and save you know Fuck off, boys! If you're not good enough, then fucking go in. We we'll train again at two o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, he was he was he, he just had you know he, he was um, yeah. What's what's the word? Um, the I repub- he was just a real leader, mm. you know, a winner. Uh, he, he, you know, I didn't I didn't learn a lot of football. Actually, mm-hmm. within the, within the two years I was there, we didn't we didn't work specific tactics. We didn't, you know, tactically how to build up against certain systems. We played the same. We focused on we focused on the team mentality and and the team performance and 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 being sharp and 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 the right you know showing the right mentality in everything we did every day. That was that was what he was really really good at, and because he had good players with individual quality, but also players who really wanted to win, and who and who were who, who were really good at taking taking critique, mm-hmm. uh, then then it worked really well. Yeah, and, and it, was, it certainly was was the start of a, a great period for the club, wasn't yeah. it? And uh, in terms of his first game, it was it was Wickham Wanderers, wasn't it? And, and yeah. he obviously famously came in and said, "Look, I'm I'm going to pick the players that that perform the best in training." I think Corey Smith yeah. got a start that day, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. Lad at he the did. Time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, he shook it up. You know, he took he took everything. He just put it in a you know, and he he just he just really g- g- gave everyone a good shake. Mm. And of and of course there were a few players who who couldn't who couldn't live up to his standards and he just got rid of them, mm. you know, rather sooner than later because he knew that if if you know the squad if 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 there were a few players who 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 pulled in the wrong direction then it it it, it just in the long run it would it wouldn't work, so he was he was he was really uh, determined on getting rid of them, mm. and some of them they knocked on on the door. I remember I remember one of the players. I'm not going to name him here, but he, he after after a week or two, he knocked on the door and he wasn't happy with with uh, he, he was put on the bench, and then a few days later he was uh, he was gone. Mm. <laughs> and then he asked, and then he came out, and then he came out on the, on, on the pitch before training, and then asked, yeah, well, this player he uh, he left for this club uh, in League Two. Uh, does anyone else want to go to League Two? <laughs> then just then just then then it's now. To let me know, and I can help you. And then, of course, no one said anything. I said, "Okay, let's okay, let's move on then." And uh, so, so it was, it was, you know, he was. We 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 never doubted what he wanted, and and from us, what he expected in terms of performance and intensity and and the the desire to to win, and it that just drove us. Yeah, it's, Every day. It, it seems like what you're saying there was there was a ruthlessness to him, and and I mean, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's quite a, a lot of supporters. Obviously, he worked with Ian Culverhouse, didn't he, at the time, and and they've subsequently yeah. sort of had a fallout, and Ian is is now actually managing in Norfolk for for a, for a non-league club. Okay. Um, that that dynamic between those two, what, what was it like? I mean, you you mentioned that you you didn't perhaps learn a lot of football, but. I think there are some supporters who sort of believe that Culverhouse did all the coaching, the coaching, and, and Lambert was very much sort of the man manager. Is is that sort of the dynamic that that you? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 Ian was Ian was always in charge of in charge of the the coaching, almost almost all of it. Of course, uh, you know the gaffer Paul Lambert. He came he came in and and you know if if he was if he wasn't if he wasn't happy with with the performance or if, if people were were being a little bit lazy or you know uh, didn't live up to what he wanted then then he stepped in and then he told us to to get our asses moving and then uh, and then we did mm. and then uh, Culverhouse took over again and the training was good mm. uh, Ian was a, was a great coach you know I really enjoyed it he was he was he was fun. He had you know he was energetic. He was he was always well prepared. He was he was a, he was he was a nice guy, 
and you 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 know you, you could see he 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 wanted to you know he cared about the players and 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 he really put an effort in 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 doing you know in preparing the the training and always in, in being professional as well and 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 make sh- making sure that we were doing that we were doing something relevant mm. uh, and also you know he he was a great he was a great coach and i think it worked well yeah, it definitely did. And and in terms of um, those two, uh, I mean, perhaps Lambert more more specifically, is uh, have, have you taken little bits of, of what you learnt from from him and sort of put it into your own management style, or have you are you almost completely different to to the way that? No, that, that no, no, no. Of course, I've I've you know I've I've learned when I when I came back from Norwich, <laughs> I was I was I was like that's the manager I want to be because it was it was so successful and we won mm-hmm. and won and won and I I, I loved. You know, I, I I really loved, even though I didn't play. I loved the ruthlessness. I loved I loved that he always kept everyone on the toes. Because if there was something I hated as a player, it was when someone was working hard enough mm-hmm. and didn't want it enough. So I loved I loved having a manager who really kept everyone on the toes. Because there was never anything in between the players where the, you know where they were. There was a little group fed up with some of the players not working hard enough mm. because if, if they weren't working hard enough over time they weren't there then he got rid of them and uh, so I, I really love that and uh, you know over, over time I've learned that, that in modern football and, and you know in, in you know in the generation of, of young people you have today you need you need some more layers as, as, a, as a leader and as a manager and, and you know I've, I've been lucky I've had kids for, you know in my early 20s so I've, I've, I now have, I now have a son who's a teenager uh, and, and 14. So I've, I've practiced a lot of my leadership ability with, <laughs> with, with racing kids. You know, it's, it's, uh, and, and, and you need to, you need to get, you know, to, to get the best out of people today. You need more than what you did 10 years ago. Mm. Because the generation, you know, it's it's just it's, you know, I'm 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 not an old coach. I'm I'm 37, but I'm you know I'm I still feel that the you know players who are that I coach who are 10 years younger than me, you know, they 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 don't come from the same uh, cultural background mm-hmm. or with, with you know with the same mentality as as the generation that I was part of. It's you know it takes it takes more than more vulnerable. Uh, you have to you have to you have to explain them why you do what you do, mm-hmm. uh, and it takes it takes it takes. You have to you have to really have and show an interest in not just the player but also the person to get to get the best out of out of uh, players today. Yeah, and I have to, I had to learn that, hmm. and it, it you know it, it when I came back to play in Denmark I was like. You know, really tough. I came from a really tough British environment where you just, you know, told it straight up to, you know, you know, on and off the pitch. It was really, the, sometimes the tone was very brutal and ruthless. But you know, people people knew that so that's that's just what you did because you want to win. And then I came back to Denmark and I couldn't understand why the young players they didn't adapt to that. It, you know, they were ah, we you know, we had to sit in a group and 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 discuss how the way we communicated with each other because we can't do this and this. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know. Mm. So it took me it took me a few years to 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 and and ex, you know I experienced a few other coaches uh, to 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 get to the uh, how do I say the, you know to get the experience and and the, the feeling that okay you need you need something more than that. Yeah, that's that's interesting to hear you say because obviously we, Paul Lambert now is, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, managing Ipswich Town, and and that is yeah. obviously what it is to to Norwich City fans. But obviously, he finds himself back in League One, which is perhaps an yeah. interesting point. So, yeah. almost ten years later, after that success he had at Norwich City, where, yeah, I mean, you mentioned his mentality there, and it seems like he he pretty much installed a, a winning mentality, a ruthlessness to it. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I guess two questions really. Are you surprised that he's ended up at Ipswich Town given his, his Norwich City connections? And secondly, are you surprised that he's in League One because obviously he, he was in the Premier League and he was regarded as, as an up-and-coming manager? Uh, oh, it's, hard. It's, it's I don't know if I'm surprised, but... Uh... 
yeah, of course, of course, I, you know, I stumbled when I when I saw the news that he had signed for Ipswich. Mm. I was like, oh, wow! I think we all did, did. That, did, 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 did that did that really happen? <laughs> uh, and uh, then I also know that that of course football is, it's you know, it's a lot of principles, and then it's a lot of. Uh, you know, uh, adjustments are. You know, you have to. You, you, sometimes you do. You, you know, you you have to change things that you didn't. You know, expect also as a manager. But of course, I was I was surprised. Uh, I did I didn't see that coming. Uh, and uh, I think he's probably. Uh, you know, his legend status in 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 Norwich has has probably uh, got a few uh, cracks mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, um, I think I think yes. I think today you need you need you need you need to be able to do so much more than just uh, than just uh, being ruthless and, and and you know being a being you ha- you have you have you have to to be able to be at the top, the very top in Premier League. You, you know you need to be tactically clever. You need to be curious. You need to work very detailed in everything you do. You need you need uh, you need to be an inspiration uh, to the players. And I think I think that that when you when you when you come from a background as a top player, you can maybe for three or four weeks you can you can live on that mm. but after that after that you know you, you don't your background as a player that that doesn't inspire them anymore what you do every day and the personality you have and you show them in every day training or you know in the way you manage them that's that's what they that's what they look for and then they don't care who you, you know where you played for you know at, at what level you played 10 years ago it doesn't matter you know, I think I think Frank Lampard uh, is, is the same for him. If he's if he's not a really really good manager and a really good coach, uh, then eventually you know it won't take him forward. You know, because because some of the kids, some of the kids today on twenty, you know, in in in, in three or four or five years from now, they don't know who Frank Lampard was. Mm. You know, football goes so fast. So a lot of players I coach. They ask me, "Where did you play? Did you play? Where did you, play? you know?" <laughs> <laughs> and they, they don't know. And it's not like it's it's been what three or four four years since I stopped. So yeah, um, that's that's, uh, that's interesting to to hear. You say. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, let's let's move back to you then, because obviously you you played you quite a, a pivotal part in in the squad up until December, weren't you? you played pretty much yeah. every game, and and that was really the game that. Norwich got some momentum in, and obviously that they sort of turned around the season and started to establish themselves as contenders for promotion. What what was it like playing, obviously in, in, at Carroll Road, but but also yeah. for, for Norwich City in that period in a group that seemed to be really together? Yeah, well, it's 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 by far the best period I've had as a football player, you know, and and also with you know with the whole with the full experience with not just the the the. the, the the football team and the staff and and you know the togetherness you have there but also with the entire club and the fans and, and the administration and everyone around everyone involved everyone play, playing a part it was it was amazing and it, it's something that you know I get goosebumps whenever I, I think think about it whenever I, I see some photos from that time then it, it you know it just reminds me how lucky I was to be a part of it and I was lucky to come in at a time where we turned it around. And uh, then I remember I played 27 games within three and a half months. Mm. And I've never played that many games in such a short period of time. And it was very physical. It was, you know, the, the football was very honest, and very direct. Uh, and a lot of the teams we played against, they just hoofed the ball up the channels, and then we had to deal with it. And, and uh, I was lucky; I just have to head it. I just had to head it back to West or to uh, <laughs> or to uh, Holti, and uh, then they, then they, then they'd score a goal or two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we had some amazing goalkeepers also behind us during these two two years. Uh, so and and some some very good players around me. And then at the end of November, start of December, I was really tired. I didn't play the best games at that times that I was playing and then I got injured and then you know 
you always the last expression is always what you remember as a coach mm. you know how did he play the last two games ah, it wasn't the best and it was hard for me to get back in into the team so when I was when I was fit again I, I didn't have that, that much credit and some good players had come in and took took over and then it was it was back in line and then I never I never really I never really got to to you know I never really get got back in because players were just playing so good. Mm. So, but I still I still enjoyed it and I still learned a lot. Yes, is it? Uh, and and I I respected the manager's decision because it was fair enough. Who mm. would change the team? They were winning and winning and winning and getting just getting better and better and better. Yeah, that's that's the most difficult time, I guess, for a player, isn't it? When you've got a team that's constantly winning, if if you're a player that's not in the team, then it's it's difficult because you can't exactly go yeah. well. Look, I, I think I should be in the team because ultimately they're they're winning and, and getting and getting points, aren't they? So it's a difficult oh. dilemma, I think, for 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 a player. Would, of course, of course, it was for me personally. It was it was diff- difficult, but it, I also really learned an important lesson about being part of something that's bigger than you. Mm. And contributing as good as you can to to the team, so the team will get the results that that we all benefit from. Because for me, it was you know I knew my contract was out in the summer. I knew it was not going to be uh, extended. Uh, I knew I was I was not going to play play in the Premier League, and it was it was you know certainly going to be my last year at Norwich City so why not finish with uh, helping as good as I could on the training pitch helping the team winning promotion and, and, and the club winning promotion to the Premier League how why would I hope for the players to, to play bad so I could get I knew I was not getting in the team anyway mm. so so I, I, I might as well just hope for the best every weekend and, and just really help help players and try to push it on push them on every day and then it was just for me a matter of training extra doing doing extra runs extra weights everything every day uh, so I was as prepared as I could when the, when I when I had to find a new club after the summer so I learned I learned a lot from that period actually that I I, I really uh, yeah it, it was it was good for me yeah that's, that's, it's interesting to get your perspective on that because I think there'd be Certainly, a lot of players in that situation who who probably be quite downbeat, who perhaps would um, be quite hurt, maybe that that they're yeah. involved in in a promotion to the Premier League that they know that they're not going to have any part in. Uh, was there not even a, a little bit of you that was hurting a little bit watching Norwich City get to the Premier League, knowing that you you perhaps wouldn't play a part? Yeah, of course, of course. I you know I, I've always been realistic, and that's 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 also something that's helped me a lot. Mm. And I've always been good at you know looking looking at myself and see could I have done every anything else could I have done more uh, was he right not to put me in the team and he was I wasn't good enough they were better the guys who were playing and uh, the last couple of games I played I didn't perform well so it was it was fair enough and then for me it was just a matter of of okay getting the best out of being in a in a club with great facilities with great players who were in momentum uh, and then getting the best uh, you know out of it so i was ready for the next level of the next club and and i've always said to players who were who were moaning about not being in the team and you know the team is winning and winning winning well it's it always looks better when you're not playing in a team that's winning and winning and winning and doing really well, and if you're not playing in the team that's performing shit, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. And I could, say, you know, I could, I could, you know, I could easily say, well, look, I'm doing everything I can. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I think I could do a good job if I came in. But the team is doing well. That you know, we always, we, we almost, you know, we're promoting to the Premier League. So being. Being in the shadow of, of the players playing there, is, you know, it's yeah, it could be worse. Yeah, I suppose there's there's worse situations. <laughs> you know, there, I, was, I was yeah, so it was not. I was yeah. Of course, it would have been amazing if I had had another year on my contract, so I had to, so I had had the ex- experience of being in a Premier League club. Mm. Uh, but but you know, I got the most out of my career when I left Denmark. No one really took took notice of it. Uh, and uh, then suddenly uh, 
a few years later, I played in Turkey in the best league uh, against some fantastic players. I've, you know, uh, I played, uh, I, I, I'd been in Norwich City, fantastic football club, and was was a part of a club who uh, who promoted to the Premier League. Mm. Mm. So I think I, I got the, the most out of my career. And then a few years later, I was playing Europa League uh, group stages in, in Denmark. Yeah, absolutely. It's, so, it's, so it's not bad. Not bad at all. No, no. So, <laughs> I, I, so, so I, feel, I felt I, I got the most out of it. Well, yeah, actually, that's that's the main thing, isn't it? I suppose it's it's yeah. fulfillment in yourself, which is which is yeah. certainly the main thing. I want to finish off by asking you a, a little bit about Norwich City at the moment. I don't know how sort of switched on you are or, or how much you, you sort of watch. Uh, them, but, but... I try, I try to, I try to. Mm-hmm. Um, what what are your thoughts on them? Obviously, in the Premier League, perhaps struggling a little bit at the moment, and obviously with with all this going on, um, it's halted things slightly. But uh, yeah. how much have you watched with them this season, and and have you been impressed with the way that they've tried to try to cope with the Premier League? Yeah, I think I think when you look at when you look at Norris in the Premier League, you know, it's like it's like a uh, you know trying to to. To, to to fly, you know, where you're not ready. What, what do you call it? the bumblebee? <laughs> it, it, you know, it it, it 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 thinks it can it can fly. You know, it, it doesn't know it. it 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 can't fly, so it does it, even mm-hmm. though it really can't. And 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 the way that Norwich City has attacked the Premier League this season compared to the to the last couple of times they've been in the, you know, it's with young players. Uh, players who brought in from maybe second league Germany, you know they haven't spent a lot of you know big money on on experienced big players. You know it's 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 with a very small small budget with talented players who has shown that that they can you know they're the future and that they are they are interesting for for a, you know better clubs. And it's it's I think I think they've they've attacked the Premier League with courage, with optimism, and of course of course they will struggle throughout a you know a whole season. And they've been extremely unlucky with injuries. Mm-hmm. Who knows who knows how it would have looked now, with in terms of points, if they had been lucky with injuries. You know you never know. Uh, uh, you know a squad like that. It, of course you can't you can't you can't. You can you know perform and and get a lot of points if you if you have an injury rate like they've had. Yeah, I think a, a lot of Norwich so. City fans will, will agree with you in terms of the injuries. Yeah. Certainly defensively. Yeah. I mean, even even yeah. when they beat Manchester City, to have the the number of injuries that they had on on yeah. the day was was ridiculous. Really, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Daniel Farker. You're you're a manager yourself. He's yeah. obviously come yeah. from um, the lower divisions in Germany, hasn't he? But he's he's really. Yeah. And, and you mentioned some of the recruitment there in terms of players coming from the German second division. Yeah. I think it's it's shown perhaps how good a coach he is that he's been able to get as much out of players that perhaps have, have been unfavoured elsewhere. Yeah, you know, you know what it's what it what it actually shows. Like it shows that it doesn't it doesn't really matter your playing background background as a, as a player. It doesn't qualify you to be a top manager. You know, it, it you know you can be a top manager even you, if you come from the fifth or fourth league in Germany. It doesn't matter. Mm. And and that's 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 one of the I think one of the most important things that that uh, that we as a, you know in the in the football community need to learn from that. Uh, you, we knew we knew that we, we we already knew that as a player you need to sometimes if you're in our city and you have to you have to uh, compete with bigger clubs on players you can't get the same players like they can in, at Everton or Leicester or Man City or whatever you you need to find them somewhere else. Mm. So, so they have to find it, but but you might as well find a top manager in the, in the in the fourth or fifth league in Germany. You know, it's about personality. It's about what you bring. It's about your, of course, your abilities. Uh, and and I hope that he he will get. Uh, you know, I think I think he's got a lot of credit at Norwich City. I think I hope they will keep him, no matter how it goes. Uh, so that he can, you know, uh, get the chance to show over a number of years that he's a great manager. He's done well in Germany, and uh, I hope that eventually he will he will get a chance at a at a bigger club mm-hmm. and prove prove the football community 
that you don't need to have played uh, at the you know played in the World Cup final to be a, a top manager at the highest level. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is obviously Stuart Webber, who's, who's the club's sporting director at the moment. He said on, on a few occasions that he thinks that he, he'll become a, a manager of a Champions League club one day, which is quite the praise. Um, yeah, and so yeah. I, I just the same with Klopp, for example. Klopp is the same. You know, he wasn't he wasn't a fantastic football player. Mm. He was a hardworking football player, and then he's he's socially intelligent and you know generally intelligent, and then he's very uh, you know inspiring. And you see where that's going, where that's taking him and his team. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just want to ask you one final question, and I appreciate your, your time completely. It's been brilliant to hear from you. Um, it's, it's been interesting over the last hour or so that, that we spoke. I think the the main thing that I, I take away from it really is how much warmth you speak about Norwich City. And you, you said yourself you, you didn't play too many games at the club, but those two years that you had were obviously very special and, and a yeah. very memorable time but I think to hear you speak so warmly about the club it will uh, it, will, it will please a lot of supporters yeah well I, you know it, it's 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 not it's not something that I just do just to to uh, to please people I, I'm I'm a very honest guy and I say what I what I what I feel mm-hmm. and uh, I hate I hate talking bullshit and especially as a parent and as a and as a leader as a manager that's the worst thing you can do you need, you need to be honest at all times dishonesty is, is it will dig your grave uh, you know people will run away from you and uh, I need I need I need people around me to to take a bullet for me whenever whenever uh, you know when, when people start firing at us so so I need to I need to it, you know I I it was uh, whatever. You know, I was I was really happy that you called me and asked if I was you know if I wanted to <laughs> to talk a little bit about about my time because it was it was a special time and I've you know I've some some of the the strongest and best memories not just for me but for my for my family uh, you know from my from my t- time as a as a professional football player that's definitely from Norwich City. I have so many good memories. Uh, we st- I still have my shirt on my boys' room. I have a, I have a little coaster. My wife, she bought it to me when we left left Norwich City. She bought this this little, <laughs> little coaster where it says manager, and then there's a Norwich logo. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it, I have it on me, I have it with me at my at my office. So uh, that's 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 quite fun. Hopefully, uh, eventually one day I will I will have it in the right office. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's 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 no. hope so for sure. Um, Jens, no. thank you very much. That's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I've thank got, you. I've got no doubt in my mind that Norwich fans are going to be looking to the Faroe Islands and and, and keeping an eye on how you get. Yeah, there. please do. Please <laughs> do. Absolutely. <laughs> we we will do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.